Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax. And while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Mrs. Brown? I'll be down in a moment. Is that you, Mama? No, that's me, David. Oh, you. Look, breakfast is all on the table, that divine birthday. Mama, I'll be right down. I know, I knocked on a door. Oh, it's been a lovely weekend, hasn't it, David? Mm-hmm. Certainly hate going back into town this morning. Well, at least you'll be back home tonight. Yep. It was so good getting back to the farm Friday. I don't ever want to leave. Say, how do you think Mama looks? Oh, same. Well, don't you think she looks more rested? More rested than what? Than before she looked more rested. Why should she? Well, she spent the whole weekend on the farm. What's so restful about the whole weekend on the farm? Fresh air, fresh milk, fresh butter, and fresh eggs. And a few fresh other things. But still, you know, she ought to look better. Mm, Mama looked all right to me in New York. Well, that's because you're prejudiced. You pass me the cream, will you? Don't change the subject. Cream's not the subject. I still think a weekend on the farm did Mama good. Well, think anything you like. Well, at least her weekend on the farm did me good. Not having to wonder how she was, whether she was eating properly or sleeping properly. Oh, you carry the weight of the world on your shoulders, don't you? Mm, don't you think it's the coming? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to see she takes a nap every afternoon all week. Who? The world? No, my shoulders. Mm. She always says she can't sleep during the day, but she did. There's no harm in trying. David. Pass me the sugar, will David. Mm. What? You don't mind Mama staying here the rest of the week? Do you? Yes, I mind terribly. Mm. You know, I can't stand Mother around. Well, of course, she is your mother-in-law. Mm. Anyway, I'll make an effort to forget. You know, sometimes even I know why I married you. Well, don't tell me. Just make me a piece of toast. Well done? Mm-mm. Rare in the center. David, can you imagine the baby even recognizes Mama? Why shouldn't he? Well, it's very rare for a child that age to recognize his grandmother. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Listen to who's busting with motherly pride. I know, I feel like I look like a pigeon. <laughs> oh, darling, it's going to be such a nice weekend. Listen, don't you think you can get home early tonight? Well, I'll try, pigeon. Thank you. Then I'll take you and Mommy to, Mama to a movie. Say, it certainly pays for me to keep Mama around. You never suggest taking me to a movie alone. Because when we are alone, Mrs. Norton, we don't have to go to a movie. You know something else? What? I love you, too. I understand that breakfast is being served now. Yes, in the main dining room, madam. I'm not too late. Well, as the French say, la, put yourself in la chaise. That's oh. occupied French. Thank you. It's all right. Goodness. I thought the whole Bulgarian army was marching past my bedroom. How many times do you think a hungry old woman has to say breakfast is being served? David's so... mind and mine work in complete accord, Mama. Absolutely, absolutely. Say, what's that hat doing on your head? Oh, don't you like it? Yeah, love it. But it's rude to wear your hat to breakfast. Take it off. I will not. Took me ten minutes to get it on straight. It's crooked. Well, that's when it's straight. Oh. <laughs> well, take it off anyway. We're not so formal. You have to wear a hat over your orange juice. My hair is combed. The hat remains where it is. Mama certainly looks silly sitting around under that hat, mm. doesn't she? She looks as if she's going someplace. Well, as a matter of fact, I am. Oh. Well, that's ridiculous. Where is there to go at this hour of the morning? 
I will not give you any coffee until you take your hat off. Well, then I shall get some at the station. Oh, we don't have to drive David to the station, Mama. He can drive himself. No, you're not very bright. Oh, still early. Well, hat or coffee, Mama. Claudia, stop treating me like an imbecile. You mean like I am or like you are? You're fresh. Then have some fresh coffee, Mrs. B. Oh. oh, thank you, David. Seriously, though, Mama, what is your head doing under that hat? Well, it's trying to look respectable. Well, it doesn't. Besides, you don't think I'm going to New York and leave my hat behind? Are you serious? Certainly I'm serious. Where my hat goes, there go I. David, did you hear what Mama said? Yeah, Mama's talking through her hat. As usual. I can see there's no use talking sense to you. None at all. Well, I had hoped that at this hour of the morning, before the trials and the tribulations of the day had set in, that we could talk sense. But as usual, I was over-optimistic. My, what a pretty little speech. But in spite of it, Mrs. Brown, you are not going to New York. But in spite of it, I am going to New York. You, you didn't say anything about it before. Well, I never get a chance to say anything about anything before. Now, Mama, you can't go to New York all of a sudden like this for no reason. And what makes you think there's no reason? Well, what reason could there be? Well, that's none of your business. You see, David, she has no reason whenever she says none of your business. You only just came, Mama. I came Friday, and I was shanghaied against my will. Yes, yes, you, you put up quite a struggle. I was forced to stay over a weekend against my better judgment, <laughs> and now I will not be locked up here like a criminal for the rest of the week. Will you listen to the way she talks about you, David? And one last word. The weekend is over, and I am going back to New York. I dare you to tell me what for. All right. I'll tell you what for. To resume my peaceful and quiet existence. Huh. To enjoy some independence. And to do the things I like, instead of being pushed around all the time. David, have you been pushing Mama around again? Yes, he has. Say, listen, why don't you say something? You've been sitting there like a rock in stony silence. Rocks don't have mouths. I thought you told me just a minute ago you wanted Mama to stay. David's on my side. That's why he's not saying anything. Silence is the better part of valor. David, I shall imitate you from now on. All right. Be silent if you like. Go back to New York if you like. No skin off my nose if you like. You may assume that I like it. Or take it that I like it. <laughs> oh, the baby. Someone is uh, paging you, Claudia. I just did him. And he just did. Oh, well. Guess I better go up and see what's the matter. Would you like me to go up? I should say not. You're only a stranger here, Mom. Well, David... At last, you agree with me. Goodness, I expected a tussle. I'm glad it's settled. Now, I haven't said anything so far, Mother, but... That's all right, David. This is between Claudia and myself. No, 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 not entirely. Now that Claudia is out of earshot, I'll... I'll take her side. I don't usually agree with her to her face, but behind her back, there's no harm. She won't get conceited. David... What are you trying to tell me? Simply that I don't see any reason why you shouldn't stay up here for a few days as long as you and Claudia enjoy it. Oh, David, we've been all through this so many times. I mm -hmm. know. It's different than it used to be. I wonder. Is it? Yes, I think so. Every time I come up here, David, we go through this. That's why I didn't want to come. And that's why I wanted you to come. You're not making any more sense than Claudia. Mm -hmm. She makes sense. So do I. I want you to come to prove to you that our door is open to you for coming... And for leaving. I knew it was. But does Claudia? Well, Claudia's a different person now, Mother. So much so that I often wonder what gave me the good sense to marry her a year and a half ago. It took courage, David. Nah. No, it didn't. I'd seen you. That's a nice thing to say. Well, don't, don't, don't misunderstand me. She can act just as silly There's as ever. There's still times when you would cheerfully wring her neck. <laughs> no, you sure are. I wouldn't love her if there weren't. But she, uh, she knows how to take responsibilities just the same. David, I'm afraid she still feels her responsibilities to me too much. Well, there's nothing wrong with that, you know. You know, I'd, I'd give her a whaling if she didn't. Well, maybe I'm a little touchy. Maybe it's because I know how tightly Claudia can hold on to things she loves. You no, know, Mama, I, I guess I have a little more faith in Claudia than even you have. I think, I think Claudia has learned to love with open hands. It hasn't been easy, has it? No, no, no. But she's learned it, so don't undignify her, Mother, by 
Treating her as if she weren't able to manage her affections. Davy, you've embarrassed me a little. Well, I didn't mean to. I just want you to realize that now there are no more barriers. Thank you, David. You know, I do love the sound of roosters. <laughs> All right, Mama, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll have them crow twice as loud if you'll stay. Hmm? And twice as early. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, twice as early. I'm an independent woman, David. But perhaps I'm not as independent as I like to think I am. Mm, I guess none of us are. Just as well we're not. That kind of independence is for people who have no dependence. David, I'll stay. I'd like to. Good. I'll take your hat. Here it is. Shh, shh. Here, here. Mm-hmm. Cry the bone, David. He wasn't crying about anything. He just wanted some attention. <laughs> like some other people I could name. Well, uh, what took you so long, anyway? Yeah, sit down. Finish your coffee. It's getting cold. Every time I started to leave, he gurgled. Mama, you've taken off your hat. Oh, what's the difference? You're only my family. You hear that, David? Mm-hmm. Well, just for that, you better hurry or you'll you'll miss your train. I think I'll have a second cup of coffee instead. A, a, a second cup? For some reason, I'm very thirsty for coffee this morning. Well, I don't think we can afford it. Can we, David? Well, let's see. How much is coffee a pound now? I guess we can let her have a small second cup. Pass me a small second cup, Mama. Maybe I'd better change my mind again, David. Oh, I couldn't stand the strain. Take the coffee, will you? What I want to know is, Mama, who invited you to stay? Well, I'll tell you. Nobody invited me to stay. Oh. Who told you you were welcome, for heaven's sakes? Nobody told me I was welcome. Oh. Nobody invited you? Nobody told you you'd be welcome? Exactly. I decided to stay anyway. That's your mother-in-law, David. Yes, that's my mother-in-law. It certainly is. That's and me. And that is typical, typical of her. But just tell me, what can I do? Well, Mama, I must say, you certainly have a nerve. I certainly have. And believe me, after your performance this morning, it takes all the nerves I have and more to stay here with you two hoodlums. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr, and the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Few pleasures can compete with the satisfaction of an evening shared with good friends, talking, listening to music, relaxing. You need go to no trouble preparing for such happy hours. Just be sure there's enough Coca-Cola in the refrigerator so that you can bring it out ice cold the way everyone likes it. Where there's Coke, there's always the sort of welcome that makes for heartfelt hospitality. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. Mm-hmm.